Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Humankind. Uh, look at all these elephants we got roaming all over our lands here. Oh, we we'll direct them towards the water. I'm sure they're thirsty. Uh, so, uh, again, I just uh, always find myself amazed with the, uh, the details on here. The little animals and people. Uh, let's go ahead and end our turn. And we should... If focusing on the the war soon. I think we're gonna end up going to war with the Huns. Uh, now we might wait a few turns, get some more things kind of sorted out here. Uh, making good money from the Zao trading with us. Uh, we need to continue trading with her too. Uh, also, Great. more reparations can what be demanded here. Oh, uh, the Huns are at war with your ally, the Zao. Um, so I wonder who attacked who. I'm not entirely sure here. Uh, but yeah, we're going to want to to make a demand here. I wonder what she's she's asking for here. Uh, maybe we're going to demand that they, said they that they surrender to the Zhao. Uh, so one thing you'll notice here is that we are still at peace with the Huns, despite the fact that we are allied uh, with you know the Zhao and, and they're at war together. So we're not like automatically pulled into that conflict or anything. So yeah, she declared war on him. All right, that has resulted in one of our trade routes being destroyed. Uh, is that the horses? It was not the horses. And he's also making demands that we give him... I'm not sure which one it is. Silka. Which one is Silka? Just looking for the territory he's claiming. I'm not seeing it here. Oh, is this, is this one here? Is it Sika? Oh, it's Sika. Okay. So we've got that set up. Uh, remember, we, we do want to attach that, uh, but unfortunately it is a lot of influence, so we're not going to be able to do it anytime soon. Not when we have all these other things that we need to do. Uh, we're going to bring the scout riders probably down here. It kind of help us out in this conflict. I'm hoping four units are going to be enough. I guess we'll find out. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be declaring war on them ourselves. I think this is a great time when we're all fighting together. Uh, we still got to get these units all put together though here. Uh, we haven't done that yet. Uh, and we're going to upgrade this guy, the Hoplite. Alright, so let's take this Hoplite here, transfer him over to right there, I suppose. So we're not wasting any movement points here. And then remember, this army is going to be coming down here. Just make sure we don't get attacked in Thebes. Well, he's going to be coming here for mainly defensive purposes for right now. This is going to be the army that we fight with. This one right here. So they'll be there in three turns. We have a defensive force, so we don't have to wait for them to declare war. In fact, we'll probably go ahead and get onto the border here in preparation to declare war. I think next turn, in fact, is when we'll do it. Yeah, give him just a little bit more time to catch up. And then we'll uh, declare war. And also for him to direct his troops towards her. I guess he wouldn't be expecting us, which is kind of foolish. But yeah, he might not be expecting us to declare war on him. Uh, so what we'd want to do is claim this territory here so we can get this unit out of here. And that is 120. Okay, I was thinking it was 110 for some reason. Uh, so we got to wait. got to wait another turn. Uh, we did get this guy over here. So remember, this unit is here just for defensive purposes, guys. So we're just going to move him into the administrative center. Uh, same thing with this unit here. Oh, well, that's right. He's going to go explore. All right, so this guy's just going to stick around another turn. These guys are going to stick around as well. And uh, this coming up turn here, we will declare war. See, uh, two more turns to get that constructed. Six more turns for the walls in, in Thebes. Uh, the Huns just reached the medieval era. That's who we're about to declare war with. And uh, they have selected the Aztecs. Also, they have invaded into our territory here. Well, that's unfortunate. So that's something to consider. And also, we're now bankrupt as well. Oh, we never got this constructed. We need to use influence for that. So our cities are losing stability because we don't have any damn money. I don't know if we got attacked in multiple locations. No. All right, and the Zao forgave us for a grievance. All kinds of stuff happening here. Somebody we don't know became a merchant. And now we have a grievance, of course. Uh, let's go ahead and demand that. I will Get more money when we declare war here. Uh, so... This is, is neutral territory, so that we're not actually at war yet. That's the reason why they've been able to attack there. They're attacking with a lot of troops, uh, but remember, we do have reinforcements coming. Uh, they should be there. They'll be there soon, but I don't know that they'll be able to participate. Let's see if we can't get them in there so they can participate in this, this battle. It looks like they should be able to. Like, they have just enough movement points to be able to help out in this. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, if we don't have reinforcements, then, you know, obviously we're in a, a really bad position. We have, like, no chance of winning this without the reinforcements. And they still have to ransack that. So it might just be better to retreat and then wait until we have the full army in here. Uh, unfortunately, this would result in us losing war support. So that's obviously not good. But yeah, it's, I, I'm not entirely sure why it won't let me put the units in here. We have the ability to reinforce. Pretty sure we got that tech. Yeah, we got that like a while ago. Yeah, organized warfare here. So yeah, we have that tech. He has the movement points. Oh, he doesn't have the movement points. Okay, I thought he had enough movement points. That makes sense. Yeah, because it was white here, you know, rather than grayed out, I thought he had enough movement points, but he doesn't. So that's what happened there, guys. All right, so that makes sense. That's why we don't have reinforcements. Okay, so let's go and retreat. Um, there's no point on, on doing this. We'll see if they attack us. They very well might. But if they did, then we would get reinforcements this time because we're much, much closer. All right, so we did lose a little bit of war support against the Aztecs. I want to take a look at what the Aztecs get since we're at war with them. And they're now making a demand that we break our alliance, alliance with the, the Zhao. All right, so let's go and take a look at... Um, oh, no, no. We wanted to look at the uh, their culture. I just want to see what they got from becoming the Aztecs. Uh, two plus land movement speed on units and a 20% reduction on unit in industry costs. They also get the sacrificial altar here, giving them those bon benefits, and they'll get the jaguar warriors. Okay, so those are, are pretty decent. No combat strength penalty from damage. That's very, very powerful. So we'll see if they get any of those in their, their units. Right now they're very cavalry focused. It's probably not. They've got those hunted cords. So let's look at the war started in this turn, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to because we actually don't have enough war support. It's sitting at 61 right now. Uh, it won't change next turn because we did get that grievance, so that's plus five, but then we retreated, so that's negative five. So it can stay at 61. We need a uh, 80. Uh, 80 war support to declare war the normal means. Now you can always do a surprise war, but that gives you the, the traitor uh, badge, which isn't that big of a deal. Uh, the owner gains some war support when destroying an enemy district, uh, but it also affects people's like opinion of you. Like how they interact with you, how they feel about you. So I'd prefer not to do that if we can avoid it. Uh, so the way we can do that is by trying to force him to declare war on us. All right, it looks like he has a grievance he hasn't made use of. Uh, and, and the way we do that is we refuse the demands here. So by refusing demands, it, it forces him to make a decision either to declare war on us or to drop all of his demands. And given he's a militarist and cruel and, and he has so many good demands here, I'd be really surprised if he doesn't declare war on us. Uh, this also grants him 10 war support, but again, it's irrelevant because he already has 100 war support. So we're going to refuse his demands. Need to inflict this on you. Um, looks like it didn't work. <laughs> Probably because he's at war. So he has withdrew all of his demands on us. Ah, that's a shame. Uh, now, we are going to get more war support because we have more ongoing demands, so that means it's actually going to start increasing. Uh, because before, he had more demands than we did. Uh, that also means his war support will start dropping down to his equilibrium, which I think is 80 because of his affinity. Because he's a war, warlike uh, civilization. And so his sits at 80. And so it'll drop down to 80 while ours will slowly increase up towards, towards 100. Uh, so once we get to 80, we'll be able to declare war, but yeah, that's really unfortunate. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, if he attacks us again over here, though, that would give us a grievance. Uh, but basically, attacking him this turn is is not an option, essentially. Uh, so we're just going to sit here and wait until we get enough points. And it's a real shame that uh, we can't get that started yet, but that's all right. Let's have to wait. And I'll see where that city is. It's a small city. Uh, so this guy here, again, he's just coming down here to kind of help us out just because we've got an extra unit here. Uh, could always get rid of them uh, to have less that we're, we're paying for. Because right now the uh, military's costing us a lot. All those upgrades that I did, that's where our money went, if you're curious. <laughs> we, we upgraded units too much, and so now we're paying too much. But, you know, I'd prefer to have him over here, so... We'll bring him over here rather, rather than get rid of him. We'll just have to step up how much money we make. All right, he's got a unit there. Uh, he has decided to attack us over here. Okay, so that was foolish on his part. I assume he'll retreat. Uh, he is not retreating. Uh, so we're going to be doing a manual battle. 
Uh, we will get reinforcements as well. And I guess what, what, what we want to do is just stay here on the flag, I suppose. I guess it doesn't really matter where we're at. I don't want him to become, be able to come up behind us, so we'll just go and deploy right there. He'll attack us. Yeah, here he comes charging us. Okay, so he went from this direction. So yeah, he would have went behind us and probably got the flag. Uh, we took more damage than he did. What what unit is this that he's attacking with? It's a scout rider. I think he's just better in general than us. Oops. Yeah, he's got 20 combat strength compared to our 16 because he's got uh, more military focuses here. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and get some, some more units in here into the battle. Uh, what we want to do, looks like we have... Okay, so we can't move over this far yet. This is just the hoplite in it. I'll go right here for now. Uh, this hoplite will go right here. And we're going to bring everybody in, by the way. Uh, this guy would go right here to shoot at him. Uh, can he not hit? Oh, he can. Let's go and shoot at him. And then we'll do the defend. And then we're going to bring this unit in as well. And he'll just stay where he's at, obviously. He doesn't have any, any other choices. And then we'll go ahead and shoot him. Alright, so he's not doing so well now. Uh, we can't attack ourselves because this is his territory, I think. Yeah, or because of the walls here. That could be causing the issue as well. Can this guy get out of here? He can. We'll let him get attacked one more turn, though. Uh, so he doesn't take our flag. Alright, so let's go ahead and end our round. Oh, I should have set the defense up. Damn it. Again, I always forget to do that. It doesn't matter anyway. Oh, it does matter. Because <laughs> he attacked us. I always forget to do it, man. I'm just horrible about remembering. I remember with these guys, though. Uh, because they get the one more movement after after they fire. So I, I typically remember to, to do it with them. But I forget with everybody else. Uh, we'll just shoot with these guys since they won't take any damage. And we want to get them more experience anyways. There we go. Uh, so we were able to destroy his unit, and that's going to increase our war support, uh, which will allow us to get into the war sooner, and it's also going to decrease his war support. And we got a new grievance, uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that. This will allow us to get more and more money from him. It is simple, yes. And now our war support is moving up you must make it right. by a lot. I How think we'll be at. How? Let's just see here. We, we'll almost be there, guys. Yeah, pretty close. So next turn, we should be able to declare war on him. Uh, let's go ahead and move back with this unit. He's injured. We'll try and get him healed real quick. Uh, none of these units are healing, so it's a good thing that they uh, didn't take any damage. I'm glad I used the uh, the archers there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and have him stationed here. So we can set the outpost up. Uh, I think we could have done that last turn. And can't really add any outpost to either of these two cities just yet. So yeah, it makes sense to, to set up a new outpost with the influence that we have. So let's go and do that. Uh, we're going to get it set up here and just see where the best location is. So this is a different territory. This is this one here. And that's why uh, we're not going to be setting up there. We're going to let her have that one. We're just going to set up here. And this is decent, 19. Uh, we'll see if there's any better. I've given up one food for production there and you're able to put it up on the hill. I suppose that would be fine. Yeah, we might do that. I prefer it being up on the hill. Uh, here you're at 16, so you're not getting that much. 17. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do, guys. We'll place it over there. You got 20 there, but it's all production. I prefer to have a little bit more food here initially. Yeah, I, th I think what we'll do is set it up right on this hill here. Yeah, right there. So we'll get that set up. That'll be this turn, actually, since I didn't take a very movement points. So it'll be set up in four turns, but. We got it started at least. All right, so these guys are, are coming down here again to, to protect uh, against an attack here. Wasn't this formerly owned? Oh, he must be at war. He is. So he's currently at war with the Persians. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. I uh, just figured that out now, actually. All right, so he took that from the Persians. That's interesting. So that results in another area for us to attack, and I think we will attack right there. Let's go to move these guys. Move them into here. I don't know that we'll be attacking into this territory, guys. With just what we have. I don't know. Maybe. They might not be able to defend against it, even just two units. It's a possibility, and then we could just wipe his city out instead of taking it. That'd be an option. Alright, so let's go ahead and end our turn. Alright, Cairo's at 18 population. 
and we did just get that tech and you can see we have improved the financial situation because we got that district done uh, let's go ahead and pick a, another tech and we're gonna want yeah I don't see getting any of these right now yeah I'm not gonna get that just yet that we do need more money maybe mounted warfare for the horsemen could always do the conquest as well you know what? actually I think that's exactly what we're gonna do is the conquest this would be help, uh, very helpful for production, but I think we're going to do this just so we can attach the outpost for a little bit cheaper, because that is pretty expensive. Uh, we do have another grievance available. You. Uh, the Aztecs Your attacked one of our army, so we're going to demand more payments. My reasonable demand, and I become we're almost there. Next turn, we'll be able to declare war, guys, because uh, they attacked us right here. Uh, we will be able to use our reinforcements, so we're going to be doing that battle this turn. Now, let's get everybody else moved first, though. Uh, so yeah, these guys are going to start moving over this way, I think. Yeah, I'm too worried about this situation here. Let's go ahead and start moving them over here. And these guys are coming back to heal. Uh, this is probably the closest location. So we're just going to let them regroup there. And this guy here probably just going to sit on the hill until we're ready to declare war. Just have them skip their turn for now. Same thing with them, since it won't be until next episode that we can declare war. And then with these scouts, let's go ahead and send... Could have them go join that army. That'd take a while for them to get over there. Or we can have them sit here and, and protect, though I don't think that's going to be necessary. Again, scouts are, are garbage. So he's not going to help that much, but... Yeah, anything helps, I suppose. A little bit of extra combat strength. So I, I feel like money should be our, our focus here. Uh, this gives one plus money on market quarters. Uh, we only have one of those. Or it gives two plus money on market quarters, and it gives another adjacency bonus. So it'd probably just be better to go ahead and get another market's quarter, uh, market quarters. Uh, we also need something for stability, but that can wait a minute. Yeah, I think we'll do the market quarter first. Yeah, let's go ahead and do the market quarter, guys. Uh, I remember we're, we're building over here where we're gonna get those uh, nice bonuses. So we'll do right there, another 10 plus money, get us up to plus 17. And now we gotta do this battle here uh, where we do outnumber them when you count our reinforcements because they're only attacking these units here. I don't know that we'll be able to bring all the reinforcements in immediately. Yeah, it looks like we won't be able to bring them all in at the same time. We'll have to wait until we move a little bit. Uh, so here in the front, Okay, let's see how we got this set up right now. So we have the, the two uh, hoplites here in the front, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, but the archers have not deployed yet. So that's kind of a shame. I'd prefer that they have gotten in it first. All right, well, it is what it is. Uh, it doesn't matter for this first turn, I guess. So yeah, let's just go to end deployment. So they'll attack the hoplites. This is... Uh, this is going to be a rough fight for them, guys, because they're a horse unit fighting hoplites that are next to each other. And they, they also have the ones back here. So this is, uh, they're not going to do a lot of combat strength. Now, because they're a range unit, though, we're not getting attacked back until our turn. So that's unfortunate. I didn't think about that fact that they're a range unit. But still, they're not doing as much damage as they would be able to do. All right, so by attacking them, we are going to do massive damage here. I want to see if we can't get the archers into this, though. Because, yeah, we'd want to deploy them here. So what we'd want to do is probably pull back the scouts here. I don't know if that'll allow us to... Well, we'd have to deploy here, wouldn't we? So we'll have to pull back the hoplites here so that we can deploy an archer unit. And then that archer unit would just shoot and then pull back. And then we'd move them back here, have him defend, and then we'll pull in the next archer unit and let him fire as well. I suppose we want to focus our attack on one unit at a time. Yeah, just so that they'll have less units they can attack with. Uh, since they've been focusing on shooting that unit, we are probably just going to set him up to defend. And then, yeah, let's attack here. We might be able to kill him pretty close. Unfortunately, we didn't kill him, so he'll still be able to fire at us. But his damage should be a lot less uh, because of his lower numbers. 13 damage there. Maybe one or two here. 24 from one dude. That doesn't make any damn sense, does it? Okay. Uh, so it's our turn again. This is round two. 
I think we'll use the archer for wiping that guy out rather than using one of our better guys. And then can he fire from here? Seems like he can, so we'll, we'll attack him now. And then we'll just set these both up to defend. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna do with that guy just yet. And then what we wanna do is move this guy in. Hmm. Yeah, let's just go ahead and move him in. Let him, you know, take some more of a, take the brunt of the attack here, I think. And then, yeah, I think we're gonna wanna start charging them whenever we can, even if we do take the damage from it. I just don't want them to get too weak here where they can destroy that unit. I guess we'll attack him. And then maybe he'll take less damage on this attack. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, he should take a lot less damage. Hopefully. Yeah, only seven. Let me get rid of this. This is all blocking stuff. Yeah, let's get rid of all these. So they're not in our way here. So we could bring this scout in. Um, but yeah, I don't expect he would do very well. So we'll just keep him back here. Again, scouts are pretty useless at this point in the game. We need to upgrade the horseman. Uh, so for right now, we'll just have him defend. Uh, so one hoplite left to attack. And I kind of want to put him in the forest here. March. Well, I'll be better at defending. Now, that does mean that they could go around here and start shooting at the archers, but if that's what they want to do, they can they can do it. Uh, so just seeing how we do against either of these here, looks like it's the same. Yeah. Okay. We wouldn't be able to destroy either one while taking a lot of damage ourselves. But we do have the forest for defending, so I think we'll be all right. So you know, let's just go and attack. And yeah, we didn't take that much damage. Okay. Excellent. So it's their turn. They're going to come over here and attack. Oh, they're going to attack the most strongest unit with this guy. Probably because of the forest here. So yeah, not doing a ton of damage at this point, guys. Uh, let's go and shoot him with the archers. And not much damage done on that one. And not on that one either. Okay. Uh, let's go and attack this unit and destroy him. These hoplites did fantastic. They held out pretty well considering that these were ranged units. Just shooting at him. I'm going to attack with this guy. We want to try and destroy him so he can't. He doesn't get a chance to uh, shoot us again. Even if we do take a lot of damage here, which hopefully we don't. So yeah, only seven. Not too bad. All right, so we won that battle. Not entirely sure why he did that unless he didn't see the other unit there. Also, they got us another military star, which I think is the last one. Yep, last one. So we won't get credit for killing any more units for right now until the next era. Because this has been such a heavy warfare uh, campaign. Uh, that also increased our war support. So, I mean, it doesn't matter now because we're still at 77. It doesn't happen until next turn. But yeah, we're going to go up by quite a bit while well, they're going to be dropping some. Okay. Uh, so I don't think there's anything left us to do here we're gonna want to to heal all these units up now before we actually come into this territory i think before we go any further i mean because they could have more units to attack us with so you know what? we're just gonna let these guys regroup here for right now all right uh though i might go ahead and get the gemstones here because i assume yeah she's attacking down here and she has much better power than he does so you know what? i think we're gonna go and get the gemstones set up guys and hopefully there shouldn't be anybody else who can, uh, you know, destroy us. And, and we just need it. We need the money, guys. All right. So I think that's everything for this turn. Next turn, we're going to declare war. And yeah, I hate how that opens up sometimes when I accidentally click on it. I'm just trying to acknowledge it. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be declaring war on this turn. So let's do that now. So we uh, get our units moved. Presence darkens my so because we have the 80 worship board, it's no longer a surprise war. We can do a regular war. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Meaningless gestures. He's probably not pleased with this news. As you can see, he was trying to do everything he could to, to stay out of the conflict with us. That's why he was willing to drop all his demands. So this here would end up being a siege they have to do, since it is a city with the, the walls. So let's see which direction we want to attack from based on where we'll be set up. Hmm. Not really great positions no matter where we're at. Yeah. 
I suppose this one's slightly better though. Because we're at least up here on this high ground. It could attack from this direction too. And that's not too bad of a position either. In fact, that might even be better than the other one. Yeah, now that I think about it, I think this one's actually better for us. So we're going to attack this way, guys. And we'll focus on the flag. And he'll have to move his units out of here. If he wants to fight us. So currently they have five of these citizen units and thus our side is just barely stronger than them. Uh, it would be helpful also to get a battering ram so we can try and take out the walls. So I think we're going to wait. Uh, so we get the, the first battering ram done in two turns and then we get uh, the first citizen destroyed you know, from hunger in five turns. So that's probably what we'll do. Wait until we get, uh, that'd be about two battering rams and, and one citizen destroyed. And then I feel like we should be able to win that uh, pretty easily. Uh, we could also bring this unit in. Actually, I think he's already brought in. Yeah, we do have him in there. So that means he's not going to heal. I don't know. I don't think he's going to heal because he's part of this conflict now. So that's unfortunate. All right, well, whatever. Uh, even with him, you can see that our, our side is still just barely stronger. So we're going to have to maintain the siege. But again, you can see how it's kind of like, because I think this is the first siege we've seen. Uh, where we're on the attacking side, uh, it's kind of like total war in the sense that you know you're slowly building up the uh, the battering rams and stuff, and and you're uh, starving out the the units that are there. Uh, though unlike total war, where all the units slowly get starved out, it only does one unit at a time here. All right, so yeah, we'll maintain that siege, uh, but overall, it takes a lot longer to do the sieges uh, than it would in a total war. You know, total war. I don't know how long it takes to starve somebody out. I think it's based on like their walls and stuff. But it doesn't take as long as it does in this game. This game takes quite a long time to starve anybody out. So we have a scout coming over here. It's not going to increase our combat strength by much. Overall, if we go in here, we could end up just getting defeated. Uh, but we'll go in there and just kind of scout it out. I mean, that's mainly what we got here. We got one guy to, to protect our scout. But yeah, we'll go take a look and see what they got here. We probably want to come up from the higher direction. And just see if like we could easily take this from them. Like they don't have walls or whatever. See, I will go in there. It looks like they do. Yeah, I think those are walls there. It doesn't look like the fences. All right, so let's end our turn. I don't think there's anything else left to, to do this turn here. And we're back in the positive for the money, so that's good for the, uh, the stability. And Thebes also gained another population, so they're at five population now. So that'd be helpful. Uh, we got another grievance here. They're trespassing on us again. So it's going to demand that. We get so much money from them. Uh, can we destroy that unit? We're at 26. They're at 22. We could probably uh, destroy this unit. So we're going to go and attack. Attack her. Get her pushed back. Let me just see which direction we want to attack from. I don't think it'll much matter, honestly. His flag would be there no matter what, I think. Yeah. He's going to be on the high ground. I don't think there's any way for us to avoid avoid him being on the high ground. But I'm hoping that we can just like let him attack us. So you know what? Let's attack from this direction. Yeah, we're going to attack from this direction, guys. So we can sit back there. Uh, they retreated, so it doesn't matter. So now they're demanding that we pay them 400 gold. Got a lot of demands on each other. Uh, we're going to move him back over here and get him stationed there. I don't know what she was going to do there, or if she was just coming into our territory, or if she was going to try ransacking something. Hard to tell. All right, so this guy here, yeah, we'll just move him down here, so we can try and get this up to like uh, four units here, even if just you know two of them are scouts. It's at least it's still four units. So let's going to move this scout here as well. That's as far as he can go for right now. So just take a peek over here, see what he's got. We'll wait to attack until we have more units. Although he doesn't have any units here to defend it. So we can just take it, it looks like. Well, if that's the case. Oh, hold up. <laughs> it went to her. Okay, I'm not entirely sure why that happened. All right, so basically we gotta get back into our own territory here, guys. 
All right, can't do that now. I think she'll be able to, to get another uh, grievance for us trespassing as well. All right, so let's go to interturn. See, our combat strength has increased there now that we got uh, that siege weapon done. So let's just take a look. Yeah, we'll get the next one in two turns, three more turns. I think that's when we'll attack again. We'll have two of these and we'll uh, let that citizen be destroyed, starve out. And yeah, that's when we'll attack. We could put going for now. Even if we could, we could probably win it. Just try to make sure that our, our losses, our casualties are as low as possible. All right, so he's coming back to our territory here. And then what we'll do is just merge these guys with him. All right, excellent. All right, so these are both healing up, I think. Yeah, they're both healing up. And then we'll come over here and, uh, I don't know if we'll have to help out at all. It looks like she's kind of got it. Yeah, she's already taken a lot of his stuff. I think uh, he's just about destroyed. Yeah, he's in trouble. Uh, so we'll have them wiped out, which is fantastic news. Quite pleased with that. That's one of our enemies, and that's just the Persians. Uh, we did finish up the market quarter here. Uh, really stepped up our money some. Might have to get another one, though. Or we could do this. This is two plus money for all of the, the market quarters we currently have. Uh, but I think we only have the two. So that'd only be four money plus the uh, the adjacency bonus would be six. So it's still probably better to get another market quarter. Of course, the problem here is the stability. In fact, stability is so low that I think we're going to go ahead and get... Oh, yeah, we could get more influence too. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the public fountains here. I mean, it's not, it's not horrible. We're going to get that anyway. And we have an event, a weave of iron and blood. In recognition of your elevated status on the world stage, a great artist has been accompanying you and your retinue as you travel the empire and beyond. Now, many, many months later, the artists and their team have completed their great masterpiece, a brilliant tapestry that stretches the length of the palace. In its embroidered scenes are de depicted great glories, marvelous cities, and the people's adulation, I think that's how you pronounce that, of your rule. How should such a marvel best be used? So we can hang it up, Increasing our authority, and that'll make our people more patriotic. We can build the units quicker. Uh, divide, and that'll increase the homeland. Every army will carry scenes of the fierceness of their love for the empire is restored anew every day. Increasing our combat strength, really helpful for a conflict right now. Or we can sell it, increasing individualism, uh, and then we'll get plus 15 money on Cairo for 10 turns. Chances of triggering another narrative event, because uh, it risks angering the, the citizens. So we're not going to do that. We're going to divide it up and get the one plus combat strength. I think that would be helpful for us, given that we're in this conflict here. All right, so one more turn till we get the wall and thieves. The thieves will be better protected. Much nicer walls here. And see if there's anything important down here. Somebody we don't know has become a traitor. Uh, so she wants us to attack here, help her out. Doesn't look like she really needs it any, any assistance over here. She seems to be doing quite well against him. What we'd probably want to do is attack her and take her out. I think that's exactly what we'd want to do, actually. So let's go ahead and start moving over there with that in mind. And this unit can come over here to defend our, our territory here. And I could help out in the, uh, the siege here, but again, she's in a fantastic position here, so I don't really feel like it's necessary to help out on that conflict. And then these guys are going to be joined into this army here. So that's our army that's going to be sitting up here for now. Don't need to invade that territory since that went back to the Persians. So the Persians have benefited from this, this conflict. Alright, so Thieves is done with the walls. we got to get them something else constructing here. Uh, their stability is okay. Yeah, it's not, not too bad. So we can go ahead and build uh, a, dis a district if we so desired. As far as what we need, we do need food, guys. So this would give us eight, so we have four farmers, this would give us eight more food plus another slot, four farmers. Uh, two plus food on the river, yeah that wouldn't really generate much food right now, uh, maybe a little bit later we want to get that. So yeah I think that's what we're going to do, uh, let's go ahead and get, get the granary. Could do a district but I don't think it's going to be better, yeah it's definitely not better. Uh, though there are other locations where we could build it, could build it down here and get six plus food but but yeah, I think the best thing would be to do the granary for right now. All right, so we'll get that in two turns, and just a few more turns here until we're ready to, to do that siege there. 
And that's probably how we would end up ending the episode. Is with that siege. Uh, Zao have changed how they feel about us. I wonder I wonder why that is. We'll have to take a look at it. Uh, so we have knocked out the research for conquest. So we'll uh, attach outposts for cheaper. I think that should reduce it by about, uh, I don't know, 40 or 50 or something like that. The, the one that we're, we're trying to do. Uh, so with Conquest, let's see what we want to get next. Uh, this allows you to relocate your capital. Uh, get the Commons Quarter, which is great for stability. Also generates some influence. Uh, then we have the Customs Farm. And that will help with all those trade networks we have. We get a lot more money for it. Uh, one more City Cap here. And then there's the Siege Tactics to get the Ballistas. This will allow us to get one more unit in each army so we can have more powerful armies. So that would be pretty helpful as well. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here that we, we still haven't gotten yet, though. Like the uh, mounted warfare. And I think we might want to get it so we can get those horsemen. And then, of course, the ransacking is more beneficial. So we'll get that first since that siege tactics just take a, a while to get. All right, so their army has moved over this way. So now we got to come over here. And just hope they don't... Well, I mean, if they ransacked it, it, was t it would take them some turns to do it, so... I don't think that's what they're going to do. I think they're really just trying to get around us. <laughs> we just won't let them, let them get through here. Uh, so we do have the public fountain, so stability is, once again, in a good spot. See what we want to get next. Uh, food. We clearly need more food, guys. Uh, could go ahead and do a, another farmer's quarter, but I don't think it's going to beat... 2 plus food on each river tile right now. And let's see, yeah, one more turn. Okay, and we do have our battering rams. We have two battering rams. So next turn, we'll assault that city. Get it snatched. Uh, also, I wanted to take a look and see, it's at 387, so it's actually a lot cheaper. Uh, I said 40 or 50, that makes it like 60 something uh, influence cheaper. So we'll be able to do that in a couple turns and we'll get that attached. Uh, over here, yeah, they are trying to retreat, and they have gotten out of uh, out of our land, so we can't attack them, unfortunately. She has one up here. Yeah, she's taking all this. It does look like he still has a little bit of territory there, though. And remember, she has to get these in the peace treaty, and she might not be able to. She might not have enough war, uh, war support to do that. Uh, so for right now, we'll just keep these guys here. There's not really anything for them to do right now. Yeah, we'll just keep them here. You know, if she uh, wants to attack us, she can. So we'll just station them right there. Uh, over here in Thebes, we have finished up the granary, so they're looking much better when it comes to the uh, the food. And I think what we'll probably want to get next is, is more science and uh, influence. Uh, this would take uh, seven turns, so it'd be better to go ahead and create our unique district here. Even if that is only one influence, you're getting all that science. And uh, we already have it constructed here, so we have to do it in one of the districts connected, which would be one of these two. Uh, would be our only choices here. So I guess we'll do it on this one. Though I'm not sure we're, where we want to, to do it just yet. Uh, let me see what all we have here. We don't know what that is. That gives science, so we, we kind of want to get it over there. So, you know, I think we might build a, another district in one of these locations here. Let me just see what would be the, the best district we'd get here. We might even just do a research district here. Yeah. I think we're going to do a research district right here as we kind of move up along here. I know it's not a lot of research right now, but eventually there'll be a lot more, guys. Uh, you can't get five here because it looks like we'd be boosting that tile right there. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and do this one, guys. Uh, so that'll allow us to, to build over here. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do uh, so that we can put the uh, this district here, this unique district, which, I mean, we could do it here, I suppose. Let me just see here. And that would result in a lot more science. I wanted it to be next to that, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I suppose it doesn't matter. We could do this one first. And then do the uh, the research quarter right here. So it looks like Thieves is going to be producing us quite a bit of uh, research. All right, so let's go and do the siege here since they did lose that unit. We're not going to wait any longer. Uh, let's go ahead and assault them. We, we now are a lot more stronger than they are. And... Do a manual battle, of course. Let's go and figure out how we want to deploy these. Now, we, we don't want the battering rams on the front here, I don't think, because they'll, they'll be attacked. So we're probably going to want to wait. 
on putting these in the front and just move them back here for right now. Though, one thing to consider is that we don't have... Yeah, hmm. And we don't have a lot of uh, land units right now. Okay, so we might have to put this one here for now. And they might just come and, and really focus on attacking our battering rams. I don't know, we'll have to see, guys. So we'll just end the deployment like that. There's really no good way to have this set up, honestly. All right, so we can focus fire there, or we can focus fire here, and, and then try and break into the city on this side. Might be easier to break in on this side, though. Well, you can also just go into the city. They didn't. They don't have all their units here defending. As though that would probably be the best thing to do is go ahead and enter the city now. Uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And then we can just kind of focus on uh, attacking this unit here. Now this is gonna open us up to being attacked here. You know, these units back here, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, look at how much more damage we'll do against that unit. Uh, let's go ahead and you know, we'll attack since we have it. Might as well attack the walls there. And just see how we want to do this. We'd probably want to get this unit up here. So at least they don't have the uh, high ground penalty. And then this guy will just defend. We already shot with him, right? Yeah. Gonna have him defend. Uh, the battery ram will defend here as well. And then with this guy, do we want to attack here? Let's attack with this unit first. And we might be able to get him into the city. And get the flag in our hands. I'd really prefer if this uh, here battle doesn't have to encompass two turns. If we could do it all in our, our three rounds. See, let's go and attack here. This should get this unit destroyed. And did not let us move into the into the flag though, so we still got to take this unit out. And they're going to focus on those battering rams, which is wise. But we don't really need them because we're already in the city. Uh, in addition to that, it, it stopped them from attacking our other units here, especially the archers. Only one unit attacked the archer. I completely forgot about our horse guy over here. So we can go and get him into the to the battle. He doesn't really help us at all against these, uh, but if we can get him up here, he could help. Probably have to just put him right there. I don't think he'll be able to move any further. I wanted to get him right there. We'll see if we can make that happen or not. Um, let's go ahead and have him retreat. And then he'll fire on this unit here. For your family. And then we'll have him defend. Now this guy here. Um, See how we want to go about doing this. I, I want to see if I can't get this horse up here. We can't. All right, so that's a shame. Yeah, that's a real bummer. All right, so let's focus fire on this. I'm not sure where we're going to move this guy yet. Probably back here. Uh, that's probably the best way to do this. And then see if we can't get the horse guy over here like to make sure that they, they can't attack these archer units who just aren't, obviously aren't going to do all that well in melee combat. So yeah, we'll go ahead and move him. Get him, uh, oh, he can't defend. And then we'll just put the horse out in front of him so he won't be able to attack them. Hello. So put him right there for now. And then we'll be attacking this unit. So we'll attack with this guy first since he's within the walls. The and then we'll attack with this guy. And I don't know if they'll be able to get over to their flag in time to stop us. Because they might be able to move around this way, but maybe not because I think we'll be blocking them. They might be able to go around here, but they didn't do that, so. Now, our units are looking pretty weak, our melee units. But it doesn't matter because we're going to get the flag right now. Now, we could go in and attack with either of these, but I think we'll probably stay on the defense. And then have the horse guy come over here. Uh, but let's see how we want to do this. So we're going to go and just shoot at this guy. Even if we don't need to do all this, it's getting us experience. It's kind of weaken both of them. And then what we'll do is have this guy retreat into here. That got us the flag, and then he'll come over to here. He can attack either one of these units. 
You see that he'll do pretty good against him. Could even completely wipe him out. But the horse guy can attack him because he's currently not in the walls. Just seeing how we're going to do here. These are scout riders, so they kind of suck. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't do incredibly well against him. So I think what we'll end up doing is attacking this guy. I just hope we don't get, take too much damage here. Just get him destroyed. And then move the horses over here, and maybe they'll attack the horse unit. Doesn't matter anyway, I mean, we want it. But they do get one more turn, so that's what I'm considering here. Uh, just make sure we have all these guys set up to defend. Alright, so it's their turn and they did attack the horse unit. Excellent. I was kind of worried about that guy. And with that, we have won the siege. Alright, so we've taken over that city. Now the question is, of course, do we want to keep the city? I'm not entirely sure yet if we'll want to keep it uh, in the peace treaty, I mean. Of course, we have to take in the peace treaty before it's officially ours, but we did get this one as well, since it was attached to it. And these guys are peaceful here. And if we can get the Huns destroyed, then we could even peacefully annex them, otherwise we'll have to attack them. Okay, uh, so just looking at the, the current war sport, they're losing a lot now. Uh, they're going to go down by quite a bit here. Uh, what's 12 points, looks like? While we're going up by about 6 points. Okay, so a lot of war left before we actually get them defeated, unless we're able to completely wipe them out, which we know they have one territory here. And then, of course, they don't have anything down here anymore. I don't see any units down here either. So, yeah, we shouldn't have any more issues here. Uh, we do have an event here about a culture's heritage. The capture of the great city of Lullaban was a proud day for your empire. Marching through its gates, however, it was clear the defeated citizens were equally proud of their own colorful culture. What do you make of their custom and rights? Uh, so, this is the first civic that we've unlocked, isn't it? So, this is the civic system, which we haven't interacted with at all. The way you get to it is by clicking on Society, and then go to Show Civics. I'm surprised that we're this far in and we haven't had any of these pop up yet. Uh, when they pop up is based on like certain certain things have to, to trigger true. Uh, like you have to have like a certain uh, tech or you have to have a city that has a certain requirement or whatever. And you can see there's quite a few of them. There are a lot of them. And this is one of the things that you use your influence on it. Again, another thing that requires influence. And essentially what they are is you, you pick one and then you get the, to make a choice between one of two sides. So with this one, culture blessing, what attitude should we have to should we have to outsider cultures? We can go mono monoculturism or multiculturism. Uh, and they all give you two things. So first of all, they move you on the sliders here, you know, move you on your policies. So like in the case of this one, we're moving closer to homeland, which wouldn't have any effect. Oh yeah, it would, because uh, we'd be moving from the 10 plus stability here in the middle to five plus stability and one combat strength. Or multiculturism, which will move us closer to the world. So you get that benefit of moving towards one of the directions here. And the other one is that you just get one uh, bonus down here, which some of them can be like really important. They can be game changing. They can change like the rules of the game, a few of them. Uh, but most of them are just like, you know, modifiers to something. So in, in this case, we'd get increased stability on our plazas and administrative centers. While in this one, we're gonna get influence on the plazas and administrative centers. Uh, so uh, if we were to go this route, by the way, yeah, I think that would result in us put, putting us in the next category just barely, and so therefore we'd also have the, uh, we'd lose the, the plus 5 stability and, and get plus 5% food in this case. So I'm not sure which route we're going to go here. As far as how much it costs, though, it's not much right now because it's the first one we did. I think each one you do is more expensive because these get, like, stupidly expensive. Now, I know we're currently saving our influence to add a city or excuse me, a territory to our city of Cairo here. Uh, so the plan is to attach this for the 387. But the first one is pretty cheap, guys. I mean, this is this is only eight influence. So there's no reason we can't do this now. However, since it's the end of the episode, I think it would be a great time to let you guys provide some input on which route you think we should go here. Uh, should we go with monoculturism or multiculturism? And really, I guess the real choice is not so much what these are, because they sometimes have events associated with more than anything you're making the choice on, on which which route you want to go here and what bonuses you want stability is something we can get many many ways influence can get many ways as well but it's something that's a little bit more useful early on here 
So I would say as far as the bonuses here, I think I'd probably prefer multiculturalism just because influence is so important early game here. So I think I'd prefer this one here uh, as far as just these bonuses. In regards to homeland, you know, nationalism versus world internationalism, you know, global outlook. As far as the, the bonuses go, I'd probably prefer the combat strength, honestly, since this is so combat heavy. So when it comes to the which one of these ones we want, we might want to go this route instead. But again, you can move that route through all the different events and other uh, civics that you can get. So, you know, even if we move a little bit towards internationalism, then that's fine. So yeah, it's just really what, what you guys would, what you guys are thinking. Uh, which one should we go for? I'm kind of leaning towards this one for the influence. Yeah, uh, even if it does move us towards the internationalism. Because yeah, we need the influence, guys. It'd always be helpful. So yeah, I'm leaning towards that one, but I'd love to hear guys' opinion. Uh, which one you think we should go with? Alright, so we're going to go ahead and end today's episode here. Uh, we'll be... Not sure where we're going next. I don't think we'll be attacking him anymore. We can't really end the war either, though. There's no way to to end the war at this moment. Uh, we have to like you know force their surrender, and uh, I'm not sure how we're gonna go about doing that. There's nowhere to attack them. Yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely sure how we'll do it. As far as it ticking down, I mean they they do lose negative four from the city being occupied, but we're also losing two from declaring war and from being the proximity to the state. That's one reason why I wanted them to attack us so they'd get the negative one, but we attacked them. So we're losing two, while they're losing four. I guess what we could do, although we got this army we have to defend against, what we could do is send an army up here to see if there's anything to take or anybody to attack over there. And it might be what we have to do to be able to get this war finished. It's gonna be kind of difficult, I think, uh, because there's nothing else really on our borders to attack. So it could be kind of challenging to get this war over with. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, in which case, what we could do is, um, uh, it doesn't look like you can ransack that because it's occupied. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I, I thought you couldn't ransack occupied ones. Uh, I think I had tried that before. Maybe that's why I was assuming that you couldn't ransack your own stuff. Uh, but you just can't ransack occupied cities. So we'd have to actually make that ours to be able to, to ransack it, unfortunately. So that's kind of a bummer. That wouldn't be an option either, just ransacking it and building our own stuff here. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to get it in the peace treaty, unfortunately. All right, so we'll have to see what we can do, guys. Uh, but yeah, let me know how you feel about that one civic uh, down in the comments below. Hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you guys on the next one, and thanks for watching.